those of you who watched my little video on the fabulous dustpan got a taste of this, but here is a more in-depth look at the very first Hoover, also the very first commercially successful portable vacuum cleaner, that is the Hoover Model O. This is on loan from my dear friend Kyle Critchbaum. There are so very few examples of these that I can't really hope to ever find one myself, but uh, through Kyle's generosity, I've been given the opportunity to play with this one and make little videos about it. So, when I received it, <clears throat> it had this power cord on it, which is a vintage modern uh, reproduction twisted yellow cord. And if you've ever seen pictures of this particular machine before, it's had this cord on it. Well, Kyle also is in possession of the original cord, which is this. And this obviously is not something that you would connect to power, so it needed to be replaced. But I'm glad that it's still here for, for posterity. Now I happen to have about a 20 foot length of reproduction brown cloth covered cord that has the round profile instead of the twisted conductors and that's a little bit more like the original cord so I took it upon myself to replace this cord with this one and the other thing I did was at the machine that yellow twisted cord had been wire nutted to the pigtail coming out of the motor which is here and I redid it in a manner more closely mimicking the original connection covered in friction tape. Uh, friction tape is a great material to make new wiring connections look old. And this power switch, uh, Perkins made a lot of these switches, no relation, but this one has an E on it, possibly from uh, Emerson. And there is a little window where it's black when the thing is off and white when the circuit is completed. This switch was also uh, temperamental. And I found that in reassembling it, it has to have a, a preload on the spring before you put it together and insert the clip. So I fixed it, and then I used it a few times, and it, it came apart on me. That clip popped off, so I had to refix it, and this time I've epoxied that little clip on the underside of the switch. So for any future service person working on this that needs to take the switch apart, <clears throat> sorry. This is an AC motor made by Westinghouse. It's a constant speed motor and it is rather different from today's vacuum cleaner motors or most any vacuum cleaner motor made in the last hundred years. Those would be called universal motors because they can run on AC or DC. If you feed it 120 volts it'll do its thing. At this point in time the universal motor had not yet been developed or at least it was not yet cost effective. So you had to specify whether your home had 120 or 110 volt AC, where you'd get a motor like this, or if it had 110 volt DC, then you would have been shipped a cleaner that had a motor that looked more like that. See the difference? So these two, you know, this does not indicate that it's a senior O improved. This simply indicates that it was sold for AC instead of DC. And the DC motors had brushes. They will, uh, the brushes are similar arranged to a modern universal vacuum motor, but they won't run on AC, at least not without a rectifier, which you can build pretty easily. The original Model O's made by Spangler were black in color and they had this beautiful pinstriping on them, uh, looking rather like a vacuum cleaner version of a Model T Ford. Hoover made the decision to paint them the color of dust so that they didn't start looking so shabby after a little bit of use to removing pounds of dust out of people's carpets. But he retained the beautiful decorative pinstriping because at this point, machinery in the home was a very new concept and anything to make it look a little more decorated would, would uh, make it a little bit more palatable to the purchaser or the user. This piece of paper is a copy of a chart from a 1950s Hoover service manual. And this is showing their earliest machines for which there are no service parts available. 
but it's interesting to see. So on the Senior O, there are no bolts at the top of the brush roll housing. On the Senior O Improved, there are. And if you look at this, there are no bolts at the top of the motor housing. And if you look at this, which is also on loan from Kyle, it has a cutaway photo of an O. This will be an O improved because it has presumably adjustment bolts above the roller. And you can see the cutaway of the, the big flat fan blades and the AC motor. And this also, in this framed uh, display, also includes a brochure showing an earlier black painted machine. Now the story of this particular one was that I believe in the 1950s a uh, Hoover dealer had run a contest for the oldest Hoover and uh, somebody produced this specimen which of course won the contest and it was in the possession of this this Hoover dealer since then and then he gave it to Kyle and this had to be I don't know Kyle how long have you had this thing it's got to be 15 years now well, anyway, as you might remember from the Fabulous Dustpan, if you watched that video, this early design was limited in its effectiveness, though it was vastly more effective than using a broom or a carpet sweeper or even a machine with suction only, having the rotating brush. But when they figured out <clears throat> with the senior number one, see the difference in the front housing compared to this? On this one, the wheels are at the sides of the roller, and I'll show you that. Ooh, okay. Whoops, hello, sorry. Okay, I'm glad the floor is soft. So this is the roller, all wooden, wooden pulley. The wheels ride on the same bearings as the roller. And they figured out that if you take the wheels and put them here so that the roller's up front in the suction opening and the wheels are behind the suction opening, that allows the cleaner to lift up a wave of the rug and then the agitator bounces the carpet back down twice every revolution, of course, because there's two rows of brushes. And that vastly improved the effectiveness of the machine. So on the Model O, the wheels are... In line with the roller and on every Hoover and every other vacuum cleaner made since then they moved them back and you can see one of the other differences the senior number one still had the elastic to hold the bag on and on the one improved they used a bag ring to prevent the bag from being blown off when it was clogged with dust and then we have the senior number two which appears to still use an elastic around an oval bag opening. So I don't know if these were available concurrently or if this came after that, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because why would they go from the ring back to the elastic? But in any case, back to our, back to the star of our show here. This is machine number 1875, the serial number literally having been written on the underside with a grease pencil. It has wooden casters with ball bearing swivels it's made very much it reminds me of ductwork the way this has been put together the sheet metal having been screwed in some places and riveted in others like that and your belt access is just a just a folded piece of metal and in there you can see the The big fan and the belt pulley. Okay. The top and bottom of the fan housing are wood. You have this little device that you can fold down this little tab that 
stops the handle from going flat. And the handle just twists in and out of this bale. I'm not sure what would have been attached to this little screw eye here because the bag is just looped through the handle up near the top. The other thing in the goodie bag that Kyle provided was the original inner bag. And this is made of a coarse cheesecloth material. It is very much smaller than the main bag, which is made of a sateen material. And I believe the intent here was for this to catch the coarse dirt and the lint and threads and leave this for filtering finer dust. So any early vacuum cleaner was tasked with removing so much dust that really the effectiveness of a design was how much of it could it remove and how well was the vacuum going to keep working after it had gobbled up dust from carpets that had never had an electric cleaner applied to them ever. There's a little button on the top of this bag that shows the top. I'll take it off so you can see inside there. So if you were among the fewer than 10% of United States homes that had electricity in 1908 or 1909, I do believe this is a 1909 machine because in 1908 they were black. You didn't have electrical outlets on the wall to connect plugs to. And in fact, electrical outlets were not yet standardized. In fact, light bulbs were barely standardized, the, the design of the Edison screw base. So if you wanted to connect an appliance, like your new electric suction sweeper, you would unscrew a light bulb and you would screw in the vacuum cord end. So on this power cord is a screw base fitting, much like an Edison light bulb base. So in order to use this, Kyle has always used it with one of these, which works. But I've been connecting it to this, which gives me a separate switch and also a little bit of a cord extension. Here we go. supposed to take the power cord and hold it in your hand with the handle to keep it out of your way. Hoover Model O, the first commercially successful electric suction sweeper.